everyone, and I'm Celine. My name is Emeline, and you're watching ETA to Z on Arts TV. Today, I'm going to be talking about Ethio Jazz. Ethio Jazz is a fusion of jazz, Ethiopian music, and other rhythms from different continents. The founder is none other than the legendary Mulatu Astatke. Today, we will meet the exceptional artists who made and continue to make this genre famous. Let's begin with the founder of Ethiopian jazz, Mulatu Astatke. Born in Jima in the 1940s, Mulatu brought jazz and Latin music influences to Ethiopia and mixed them with traditional music after training at the renowned Berklee College of Music. He became the first African to graduate from Berklee. In the 2000s, he gained a wider audience thanks to the movie Broken Flowers, starring Bill Murray. Often standing behind his vibraphone or conga, he still performs on stage and has opened his club called African Jazz Village in Addis Ababa. Denanacho? What is your definition of Ethio Jazz? When Mulatu was in, uh, in the States abroad, he absorbed, I think, the influence of Latin and jazz influences and when he came here he fused them with Ethiopian modes and scales and he used, uh, for example, a Latin groove with percussions and he used improvisation which is a jazz element and he used the Ethiopian uh, modes and used Ethiopian melodies or his own original melodies. This genre is well known abroad but is it as popular here in Ethiopia? There are periods of times where it makes a surge, it makes a comeback. When we used to have the club at uh, the Jazamba you know, days that were uh, dedicated to uh, Ether Jazz. So I would say it's an on and off, it's kind of uh, comes in waves. Uh, uh, if you look at uh, what's happening in town right now, there are places where they cater to Ether Jazz and experimental uh, music. One such place is Fandika. Yes. Um, and maybe a few artists that are really specializing in that uh, idiom. Sami Piano. Uh, Sami Irga. Irga, Irga, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> is one such person that uh, really specializes in that. Who are your musical references in Ethio Jazz? I think Mulatu uh, started the Ethio Jazz uh, movement and then after that, uh, during the dark era, there was, uh, we call it the dark period, there was nothing happening much in that, especially in the Ethio Jazz uh, part of the music. And then uh, guitar player uh, Grumbas Moor has a, a big part in starting a jam session in, at the coffee house and then that started an interest in jazz, and then later, but at the same time, simultaneously, me and Abagaz, we had a band called Admas uh, in the States, and we're trying to do some Ethiopian jazz stuff later, you know, mixing Ethiopian stuff with other uh, influences. And then uh, when we came here, we used to jam at the coffee house, and the coffee house started this interest in jazz, and later Ethiopian jazz. So a lot of groups came out of that. We had groups called at this acoustic project, Nubian Arc, Jazz Maris, Guy and Love. Uh, and these days, there's a the Guy and Love is still playing. There is a group called Jazz Bicina. There's a lot of younger group, uh, Gojo Trio. There's a lot of different groups doing their own experimentation of Ethio Jazz. What kind of reception does Ethio Jazz get from the audience? There's definitely a market for it. There's a niche. It's a niche market, but uh, whenever for instance, Fandika, uh, there is no nights that uh, goes by uh, not being uh, packed. It's, it's a very popular place. So when it's available, uh, people do like it. And now our, we're facing a problem of uh, not enough venues catering to this uh, style of music. But it is, uh, it is popular. I wouldn't say it's as popular as uh, pop music, but there's a market for it. You have founded Jazamba School of Music. Can you tell me more about this school? We went to a school called Berkeley. Uh, and we also used to dream about um, having a, such, a, such an institution in Ethiopia and uh, we got together with uh, Groom, Henok, uh, me, uh, Jonas, uh, and uh, Sami. Sami. Yes. Uh, we partnered up to uh, open up a school called Jazamba, which also had the, the jazz club component, uh, which uh, was designed to uh, subsidize the school. The school is no more, uh, not, not in existence anymore, but uh, there's uh, movements on restarting it again. We'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. yeah. What kind of support do you need? 
The help we need with the school is financial mostly. The school was an NGO, we were teaching for free. The teachers were not getting paid. We didn't have a place to teach. So uh, at the beginning, uh, Shagga Radio gave us a space. And then later the Italian Cultural Institute under the Italian Embassy, they gave us a place for a couple of years and then we didn't have a, a place anymore. Mm -hmm. So that was a big problem. Renting a place is, uh, takes a lot of money. We tried to fundraise for many times. Many times we hired people even to help us fundraise, but it was difficult to get money. Hopefully so, someone will be willing to support you guys. It will be great if that happens, uh, there's a chance to continue the school. He will not tell you about the impact that uh, the school has brought. I mean, I think he has really cranked out the next generation of musicians. A lot of them have gone through the school. And uh, there's, there's a lot of testimony going around about how that has impacted the Ethiopian music industry. Uh, it has really raised the quality of musicians. Do your students have any interest in Ethio Jazz? Yeah, because, you know, I think there's two layers to being a musician. Every musician, I think, has a fantasy of playing jazz. You know, Ethiopia jazz, especially. I think, uh, you know, that I know by uh, going around, uh, for instance, I would just compose uh, Ethiopia jazz songs on my downtime, knowing that I might not perform it. I have a couple of things like that, and everybody has that. And there's a component of a musician that has the Ethiopia jazz element. Now, bringing it out is a whole different uh, story, I think. The same is true with all, all musicians outside. That's true. Yeah. So to add on other guys, yeah. for example, when I'm teaching at the school, we use usually jazz standards, like yeah. jazz standards that's used all over the world. So we use that as a vehicle to teach them the harmonies and the rhythm, the time, all those things that go with music education. And then when the time comes for them to perform at the end of the year or at the end of the semesters, we give them uh, a chance to perform with their groups, the students, and we'll tell them to do whatever they want to do. And they always do Ethio Jazz, original stuff that they wrote. So, because uh, I think that tendency for us also is, uh, is very difficult for us uh, to compete in the mainstream jazz because we are not born doing it. So it's a little bit foreign to us, we, do, we double in it and we do it. Uh, we don't really consider ourselves like a really true, authentic jazz, straight eyed jazz players. But we have that influence a lot, a lot of that influence in us, in our playing. And then uh, we know some Ethiopian, we were Ethiopian, we were born and raised here, so we know the Ethiopian skills and more. we play them all the time with singers and stuff. So the natural tendency for Ethiopian musicians, most of them, is to uh, go to Ethio jazz direction when they want to play some jazz, because to just do the straight ahead jazz, you know, you really need to soak the music and experience it, live it and learn it from the time you were young and we don't have that here, so that's the tendency usually. There's an interest in jazz, and then we're Ethiopians, so the natural way to go is to fuse the two and find a way to improvise and do the stuff, having our own stamp on it, and which is also has more chance than for an Ethiopian musician, they have more chance to do original Ethiopian jazz and get somewhere than just to straight ahead jazz. You know, we, we do that also, but uh, you know, that's the tendency, I don't yeah. think. And uh, Ito Jazz has sort of seeped into the, the, the pop, pop music of, of today. Uh, the horn arrangements, for instance, the bass lines, you know, some of the Latin bass lines have seeped into the, uh, the pop music of today. So I think there's a continuation of that uh, that have branched off from, from the Ito Jazz. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This song is from a famous singer, composer, and arranger, Germa Beyene. Germa Beyene was one of the icons of swinging Addis in the 60s and 70s, a period when the musical frenzy was in full swing. But the fall of the empire in 1974 by the military coup of Colonel Mengistu Aile Mariam sounded the death of artistic freedom. The local nightlife had to deal with the strict rules of the third dictatorship, which introduced permanent curfews on its citizens. During this period, Germa's band, the Warias, went to the United States for a concert and several members decided to stay behind and go into exile. Heartbroken after the death 
of the love of his life, Germa stopped playing music for many years. It was Francis Falsetto who convinced him to return to the stage after a 25-year absence, where he had been living off of odd jobs in the United States. The Frenchman then produced the album Mistakes on Purpose, featuring the group Akale Wube, and this was the last opus of the cult collection Ethiopique, which has been restoring Ethiopian music to its former glory since 1997. Ato Girma it's such an honor for me to have you here. So many Ethiopians grew up listening to your songs as kids, but some of our viewers may not know who you are. So, who are you, Ato Girma Beyene? It is true. I started music when I was a child in 1955. It was in Ras Hotel. I have a very close friend who's called uh, Bahata Gabrahiwat. I was attending Shemal Lesabte school at the time. One day, when I was passing by Ras Hotel by foot, we called it swinging by foot because we walked by foot, because there were no cars at the time. I saw people gather there and standing in a queue. Then I found Pata Gabrahiwat coincidentally. We didn't know each other before that. Then I asked Pata what's going on. He told me there is a music competition and then I queued behind him. There were many people who were there for the competition. Pata entered when his turn came. The judge was called Getaun Wargu, manager of Ras Hotel. He has a very sharp ear for music. He was a very skilled judge and had expertise in the field. Luckily, Pata and I succeeded in the competition. This was how I started music and I joined Ras Band after that. You are a prominent figure of a period called swinging Addis. What do you remember from this period? When I started music in 1955, I performed it as a young musician being free and open-minded and we enjoyed our time very much. It was very interesting. We also went out of Addis Ababa to Harar, Diredawa to perform. We performed in Ras Hotel and Gennat Hotel, most of the time on Fridays. Many people who love music were coming there and it was really a good time. At that time, many musicians used to come from abroad. They were from Africa, America, France, Kenya, Nigeria, just to mention a few. And we listened to their music and we picked the music which we were interested in and performed it. This was the kind of music we used to perform. We performed in Amharic and we performed music from abroad. Therefore, people came every Friday and danced. So it was a great time and it is a good memory. You co-founded the band Alem Germa with late Alema Yueshete, who was one of your bandmates. What do you remember from him? This is a good question. We were childhood friends. I admire Alemayo. I'm not like Ale. He was an open-minded and likable guy. He never backs down from doing what he loves to do and many people love him and he has lots of fans, both men and women. I was almost 15 years old when Alemayo and I met each other. I was attending Leul Makonen school in Mercato at that time. Ale was attending Arbenot school and there was what's called Texas Tea House in Piazza. It was Piazza. where we met each other. Ale Mayo was an open-minded and talented musician and singer. He was a very well-regarded singer. May his soul rest in peace and condolences to his family. Alamayo and I started music together in 1958. We met each other before that also, but we were not working together. He performed in the police band. He loved traditional music so much. 
Once he came in 1958, when the music started to be recorded, he introduced me to Amma Hashati, founder of a record label. We recorded four records with Amma in 1958. After that, we started performing together and Alamayu wrote the lyrics and I did the melody and we produced it with Amma. In 1965, we started the Alam Girma band with Alamayu at Taitu Hotel. There were other talented bands as well. Amongst those who closely worked with us was Abeba Kasa. He is still alive and very talented musician. When you were playing with uh, Ali Mayu Echete, it was during the empire. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, with the Walias, the regime changed. During the Derg regime, artists were prevented from creating, from playing. Can you explain to me? Regarding what you've asked me now, there was a curfew at the time. So we respected the time, but we had an ID card that showed that we were musicians. And we performed until midnight or until 1 or 2 a.m. And then we went to our homes. As you have said, the time was not good. Music has alternating features of happiness and sadness. There is a bad time and a good time. There were many songwriters in the Walias band at that time. I mean, we were crying inside but laughed overtly. This is the life of a musician. It's like this, whether we like it or not. There's no happiness in music always. It's about making people happy. It's possible to write a very good song when you are deeply sad and the same when you are happy. But I personally believe that moments of sadness are much greater. So we used to write about this at that time. And there were talented songwriters at that time. One who had been performing with us was Mulukan Mallasa. I knew him for one month. He came to us and produced one album. Mulukan is a very skilled and talented musician. He can perform all kinds of music. He is very talented. Amma Hashate, may his soul rest in peace. I have no words to explain him. He was very talented, very brave. At that time, no one dared to invite 10 musicians at the same time at a concert. He had no fear. The time was a moment when it was impossible even to invite one guest into your house, let alone 10 musicians. But Amma Shate invited them on his own. I don't know. I have no words for him. You moved to America shortly after, like many Ethiopians. It was not a planned decision to move to America. What happened was that Wale Band went there and coincidentally, we met with a family. But we left peacefully, very peacefully. There was no single problem. Those who have family back home went back and the rest of us stayed in America. So we parted peacefully. Mulatu is considered as the founder of Ethio Jazz. What did he bring to this musical genre? We came to know each other with Mulatu as soon as he came back from America in 1957. Mulatu plays conga, piano, Vibraphone, he is a master. Mulatu is among the prominent ones. He toiled for many years. He worked and toiled for many years in patience to introduce jazz to Ethiopia. And he promotes different Ethiopian music in different ways. He is one of the best musicians in the world. But he achieved this not for free, but by paying a lot of sacrifices. I admire him a lot. We have known each other for a long time. He has patience and he is a musician who highly promoted Ethiopian music. Five years ago, you released an album with Akale Wube called Mistakes on Purpose. What can you tell me about this? He was actually... <laughs> this is a very difficult question. <laughs> It was your, your return after yeah. 25 years uh, of silence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
በዚያ ጋዛ ማያቸም ለማድረግ first of all to make it short producer the musical the producer of the music was a french man named francis falsetto francis falsetto european car it was in 2015 that we went to paris to francis francis kakale ube gab astro and francis introduced me to akale ube astro mr ganayen then we met in 2015 with a francai hidden francai we went to france with my brother siyum bayena siyum bayena imejemra it was the first tour that we performed there how was it for you to perform again after 25 years mubarak man it's like a blessing it's so interesting when i compare it to the old days there are some reasons I quit music for a long time and came back again. And by chance, these people whom I've mentioned earlier, Francis, Akali Ube, Kadro, Mulatu, Ammaha, and Alamayo, it is because of them. They are the major ones who inspired me. በዚህ የETA2Z ክፍል እንዴት ደስታችሁ ተስፋ አደርጋለሁ በሚካተለው ጊዜ እነግናኝ